Hello, and welcome back. We'll be talking about how to use your kiln today, along with thermal expansion, here on the Matt Yasa channel. I'll be doing a few demonstrations today. I want to start off with the implosion marble first, and then followed by the kiln later. I'm going to connect a smaller rod up to a larger 28 millimeter rod, and then I'll flame cut a small section off. This will be the base for the marble, sort of like a canvas to add color to. I won't be using the larger section, but I will marver down a point on the end. This will help keep it from cracking while it cools. Cooling is the most destructive phase of the process. Heating can be a bit less stressful. As we warm up the glass, we're mainly heating the surface layer, which then radiates that heat inward. And so it takes a lot of time to get the core to molten temperatures. As the glass heats up, it also begins to expand. And since we're working from the outside in, nearly all that pressure from the expansion is getting pushed outward into empty space. I believe it does push inward also, so if there's stress already in the piece, it could immediately crack. And so I'll flatten this out with a nice close-up shot. You can see those ripples forming up from the quick cooling against the graphite. I always think of it as a fingerprint of the press. Now I'll begin to apply some dots of heavy blue leprechaun. It's a dense adventuring color with a lot of sparkle. It's very problematic in an implosion. Its coefficient of expansion will be slightly different than the clear glass. And so there might be a slight struggle for space between the two. As it begins to cool, we lose heat from the inside going outward. It starts to contract in on itself. But as those outer layers begin to rapidly cool and solidify, they start resisting that contractive force still happening in the hot core of the glass. This can begin to build up a lot of tension or stress, almost like a rubber band pulled out very tightly, ready to snap. And so I have all of that color completely melted into the surface. I'm gonna to begin to melt the entire thing down into a sphere. The clear glass will begin to melt down around the color, starting to implode it deeper into the sphere. I'll attach some fade to black and pull out a quick stringer to do a small backing. This is not only to create a nice backing to look at, but also used to hide the less attractive side of the implosion. The front side of the marble will have a clear lens that will help magnify the implosion inside. Also using the right contrasting color for your backing can definitely help the implosion stand out. When I made the marbles in the opal encasement video, I made sure to use a black backing on the white opal and a white backing on the black opal. The fade to black didn't cover it up enough, so I'm gonna add some red frit as well. And so I've gotten a lot of requests on a kiln video. The latest one was just a few days ago. And so I thought, if that's what you want to see, I'll go ahead and push it all the way to the top of my project list. I had to explain the thermal expansion process first before we got into why we use the kiln. Its main purpose is to anneal your work, which helps release any built-up stress from cooling. This is especially important if you're planning to sell your work. That way it won't break on your customers later. But the kiln is also a big help with cooling down the glass, as it can provide extra radiant heat to slow down that process. One thing you may ask is if a kiln is actually required to practice lampworking. 
And no, it is not. I've actually done a lot of projects on the channel without the kiln. It really comes down to the size and shape of the object, if it will survive a bench cooling or not. It might also take quite a bit of time and practice before you're ready to sell your work. So waiting a little bit, maybe six months to a year, would give you some time to practice before you jump in on a kiln. I'll finish rounding the marble one last time and then place it on my graphite marvering pad to cool. And now normally once you see the glow vanish from the inside, which would be right about now, is when you'd want to put it into your kiln. But I'm leaving this one outside so we can see what will happen. Well, it's definitely holding together a lot longer than I imagined it would. And there it goes after 15 minutes. And that may seem like a lot of time, but lamp working doesn't happen very quickly. You could very easily spend that much time on one side of your project and forget to warm the other and have that happen to you. And so that would be the third use for your kiln to help you reheat a large, difficult project. And so I believe most of these kilns are similar. The button names and their placement may be a little different. So I'll start my kiln here with a toggle and press the review button. I'll press it one more time to skip review and then press the program start. And now to stop the program, I'll press the program stop and then press it one more time. And so let's review this program called bead four. The delay is set to zero, which means it begins without any delay. Ramp temperature is set to full speed. The Fahrenheit target temperature is 1050. It will hold this target temperature for four hours and 15 minutes before ramping down at full speed to the second Fahrenheit temperature of 940. It will hold this temperature for 30 minutes before ramping down at a rate of 100 degrees per hour until it reaches 500 degrees, which then it will shut off. And now I'm going to show you how to change the program. You can do borosilicate, soft glass, and even fuse glass together. Hold down the option button until CFG pops up and then press the program button. And then at this point, you press the up and down buttons to cycle through the programs. Press the start stop program button again to select it. Furthermore, each program is broken up into sub programs. Number one is for small soft glass beads. Two is large soft glass beads. Three is a batch anneal program. And four is for borosilicate beads. And now I'll create my own program. I'll hold the option button again to get CFG, press the program start stop, and then arrow up to user, and then press the program button one more time to select it. And I'll press the program button, arrow up to the six sub program, and then press the program button again. I'll turn the ramp up to full speed. This will make the heating element continually run until we've reached our target temperature. And now it may be important to note if you lower the ramp speed, it doesn't make that heating element receive less power, but instead it cycles the power on and off to slow down the heating. So I only set it to 700 degrees and now I'm going to hold that temperature for one hour. This is going to be my bismuth melting program. I grew some bismuth crystals in the last episode. Make sure to check that out. And so although you do need to bring the kiln up to a target temperature for the program to work, you don't necessarily have to bring it back down. You can have the program just shut off at that point. 
And so for this program, after it gets up to 700 degrees, it holds it for one hour and then shuts off. And now we've reached the end of the video. I want to thank you for checking this one out. And now if you've enjoyed it, you can definitely pay me back here by hitting that like button and sharing it on Facebook or Twitter. Your direct support is definitely what's been helping build this channel over time. And so let's keep that ball rolling until I see you next time here on the Matt Yasa channel.